I've done quite a few projects with processing in the past, but the switch to P5.js has provided a convenient way to interface with the ever-increasing amount of available web technologies in the form of browser standards or, more simply, JavaScript libraries. Indeed, the whole world of npm.js can be at your disposal if you so wish. However, packaging up those dependencies can be cumbersome and require a build process setup, which is uh, kind of discouraging for the creative bunch of you out there who just want to use their projects in a performative environment. Clearly, having web technologies at your disposal is awesome, yet uh, requiring a browser to be running all the time seems to be more of an overdue. Plus, there's privacy concerns. Will it transmit all my passwords? Do I need to run it in a sandbox? And more down to earth, how does it connect to my hardware? Will my MIDI device work? Luckily, there's Electron. Basically, that's a Chromium core running in a Node.js process, capable of rendering everything just as in a browser. Plus, it's very easy to get all the goodness from a desktop application, such as uh, interfacing with periphery. Think MIDI, OSC, etc. So I decided to show you real quick how you can set up your P5 patch to run in Electron and connect it to Max via OSC in just a few minutes. First, we're going to fire up a terminal and clone the Electron Quick Start repository from GitHub, which is the official boilerplate from Electron. We're going to install all dependencies that come with it using npm install right away. Additionally, Let's install P5, OSC, and MIDI so we can start connecting our application to the outside world immediately. With npm start, we can confirm that this setup works properly. Voila, here's Electron's Hello World output. We'll start a code editor to inspect what we have come up with. But basically, the quick start boilerplate consists of a main.js file responsible for the main process, a renderer.js containing code running in the embedded Chromium browser, and an index.html displaying the initial page that will be rendered. We're going to delete the boilerplate output and add a container diff and some styling for our p5.js canvas. Below you can see the renderer.js being required into the HTML's DOM. Let's run that. A black page as expected. Back to our project structure. We're going to create a p5 directory and a sketch.js in it. To be able to work with p5 here, we need to run it in instance mode. This basically means we pass a p5 instance down to this module. Uh, this namespaces our sketch under the p variable and makes it more integration friendly with other libraries such as Electron. Consequently, we need to define and call everything pertaining to p5 with dot notation. In p setup, we create the canvas with the windows width and height and assign it to the canvas's container. In p.draw, we just set the background to a light gray for now. Okay, let's leave that for now. If we open up renderer.js now, there's a few things we need to set up. First, we'll require in, well, p5, then the sketch. Lastly, and this completes the instance mode, we instantiate an app using p5's constructor and pass in the sketch. Okay, let's look at that. A gray canvas, cool. Back in the sketch, we load the OSC module and instantiate a UDP port. When a message comes in, we're going to log that to the console for now.
Finally, we'll need to open it. By default, it listens on port 57121 for reasons unbeknownst to me. Let's npm start that again. Being run in a Chromium instance, we can fire up the DevTools, typing command option I. Using a simple max patch, we can send in a little message and voila, here it is in the browser's console. We're going to rework this patch a little so we can send in positions. In the sketch file, let's create two coordinate variables. We're going to draw an ellipse located at these coordinates. Okay, here it is. In the message receiving callback, we need to switch on the message's address and reassign the position coordinates. Back in the max patch, we can use the number boxes to control the circle's position. This concludes this video and hopefully leaves you with plenty of ideas to use this setup.